Alright, hey everybody, this is the barrel ceiling video that I promised was coming. I figured I would start out with the uh, initial prep work for it, and I'll have two views of this for you. So this is the time lapse from an isometric view of it, and then I have the uh, conventional recording camera down below. Um, you'll see shortly. So anyway, uh, the space you're looking at here was uh, removed. The ceiling was cut out by my customer um, quite a while before, and um, I just opened it up so it matched the exact width of that alcove behind that beam you see, so that when the ceiling came through, uh, it had a nice clean finish all the way through. And this was strictly just for accent, that's the only reason we did this. Um, this is a bed and breakfast and that alcove is going to become where the bed is. So we just wanted a really cool looking area over top of it um, to appreciate. So. This is the framing. Um, I don't think anybody's seen this so far. Uh, this was uh, all framed essentially using math. Um, I you you could have built this just like you would uh, conventional ceiling framing, hip fr you know a, a hip roof with hip framing. The only difference is instead of your flat rafters, you're arching them. So most of it's pretty straightforward as far as your framing goes except for your hips because unlike a hip rafter which you can just use some basic math to align um, the hips you have to scribe the arch from your common rafters to those hip rafters and then you need to uh, uh, you need to measure and cut your jack uh, rafters to the hip at the appropriate lengths to, to keep all of that um, all of those arches linear all the way to the corner so anyway uh, this is the uh, you can see that I just built that wall out what we opted to do there there's a, a mess of stuff to deal with so instead of trying to clean up the wall framing and shim things out we just built that wall out and we dropped a brand new wall under that which you'll see in the tour video that I did if you uh, take a look at that so I built that out, I plated that, I'm leveling everything and I'm making sure everything's square because that's really important for a ceiling like this. You need everything to be square or you'll have a lot of trouble once you start laying your planking in. So here's where I'm cutting the drywall out um, and I'm gonna nip back the sheathing over here to the right and that was, uh, again, this that used to be a wall there so I helped my client uh, he's a friend of mine as well, so I had helped him quite a ways back put that LVL carrying beam up there under the original wall framing to carry that load for the upstairs. Uh, and that was where he got the inspiration for this. So. Okay, so you can see I set the laser up there real quick and that was just to get a level run. And now I'm putting the commons up. And uh, so the way I did this is I, I worked actually from the centers. Instead of like pulling off of a wall, I laid everything out from the centers on the two um, narrow ends. Uh, and then just matched that on my other. So that way my math is always perfect. I have a true, um, I'm the same dimension from the corner in both directions. And that's how you would frame any any roof anyway. But uh, in in this case, it was it was especially critical. So uh, I didn't um, I didn't like try to lay out my rafters on 16 inches on center. They're actually less than 16 inches on center, but spaced off of the center as the starting point, so that I had perfect symmetry. So um, I did add in here. This is in the shop. This is how I cut these uh, rafters. Um, most of them were pretty easy. The hip rafters were real long, about six feet, I think. So that took some uh, doing, getting through the bandsaw um, by myself, but it worked out pretty well.
right, so on these rafters I, I put here on this LVL, um, you'll notice I spaced them out, and the whole intent behind that is we knew we were going to wrap the beam with the same Japanese larch that the ceiling was made out of. So I've spaced them off three quarters of an inch, and that way when I cut my larch uh, beam wraps, I would be able to just slide them up there between the framing. So and here's one of the hip rafters. Uh, you can see how long those were. And again, like I said, the and the only way to get that hip rafter arch cut is you need you need it you need to scribe the arch from your commons onto that hip rafter in place because the the it's a, it's a much longer sweep than the other rafters are because it's at a 45 degree so Okay, so this is where it gets interesting because the behind the beam here, if you were to look at this closely, the center point of these on the other end are perfectly square. So like I just explained, the dimension from the corner is the exact same dimension to each common so that you have perfect symmetry and all of your planking lines up in the corners. But in this behind this beam, if I had done that, I would have ended up with just a little tiny piece of the hip rafter on the other side of the beam. And I did not want that. I, I didn't want to see like only part of the arch behind the beam. So what I did here is I actually custom, um, custom cut this and pulled it out of whack towards the center. So basically when you're on the other side of the beam, the center lines right up and looks the same as the other side. So what that causes is in the corners, the planking does not line up um, in, in the corners. So uh, I'll try to detail this further along in the video, but when you look in the corners on this side, the planks actually don't line up because the your angle on one side is longer than the other. So you have a short angle and a long angle and that causes it to run askew. Um, but it was what I wanted to do there because I think the effect was nicer seeing that come right up the center just like the other side. Whereas if I hadn't, I would have ended up with like a, you know, a four inch, um, a four inch piece and a bunch of, of muckety muck right in the center on the, on the big so side of it because it, that those those hip rafters would have actually in their proper traje trajectory would have actually come through the LVL there so this is camera work here is a little bit uh, funky but I wanted to show you guys the framing and this was the best shot but it was a little fast um, so this is the shot of the framing uh, all done so you can see the wishbones and the way everything came together So here's the start of the, the planking, and uh, as you can see, uh, the first first core, first couple courses are critical. So making sure those are absolutely straight and uh, getting those joints lined up really well, and that will set me off for a nice finished product when everything else starts coming together. So we don't want any horseshoes in the field.
So if you catch it in the corners, um, you'll see it, what I'm doing is uh, using two template blocks. And I have a rough idea on what the angle and bevel for each cut is going to be. But every course, every single course of planking that you put up, that changes. So they each change a little bit less uh, than two degrees um, based on the arch that I had here. So, you know, say the bottom one was a 45 degree cut with a 15 degree bevel. Um, I don't remember what they were, so I'm just throwing that out there. The next one you put on will be like a 40, um, will be like a 44 and a half degree cut, and it'll be, uh, the bevel will change, and it'll, it'll be a, instead of a 15 degree, it'll, it'll be a, uh, a 14 degree, you know, or, or 13 and a half degree. So, the whole time you're doing this, you're, you're, I'm templating every single, every single set of boards that goes into a corner is being templated to ensure that I get a perfect joint in the corner. Uh, once I've done that, then I find a piece that uh, will work as far as the length goes. I can split it on one of the rafters or it goes right to the end and I'll cut them to match the two templates and there we go. So we're coming down on the end of it here, and uh, that's my son, if my seven-year-old son, actually helped me with most of the ceiling. So uh, we left the center out on that side because there was a light going in. So I just pinned up the last two pieces, and the last center sliver that goes in is uh, had to be rabbited and just nestled right up in there. This whole thing was done with shiplap. So anyway, um, so yeah, I don't know if you can see in the corner there above the green ladder you'll see there the planking in those corners does not line up uh, one one course travels faster but you can see what I did there so I end up with a little sliver right at the top that lines up with the other ceiling and if I hadn't done that I the the two corner joints would have ended up uh, diving into that LVL at much broader so I would have ended up with a big wide plank in the middle at the top and I wanted it to look like it ended into the LVL. So that was why we did that and I, I was happy with the outcome. So now we're just throwing the wrap on the beam like I said. I've, I had left everything so I could just sandwich that up in there. And this is the tour from the uh, other video. I just included it on this to show you the final product if you hadn't seen it. So, uh, um, I was explaining in part, part of my hand, I was explaining the video in this, uh, in this link here that I included, but, but that's the finished product, and I didn't actually get to camera the trim that I put in, but it's a double, it's a, it's a crown that goes to a flat stock material, and then there's another crown on top of that with spacers, and the idea behind that was so we could run this lighting. Um, ultimately, that's probably going to get changed out for a rope light in the future, so you get more of an even ambience casting its light up that arch. So, that's it. That's the barrel ceiling. And I did this actually just, just for YouTube. Um, I didn't actually charge anything to do this. It took me about uh, four days, I think, four, four to five days total time. Uh, invested in it and uh, it's definitely a, you know something cool to uh, to see so I hope you enjoyed and I would appreciate it if, uh, if you found this worthwhile to view please do share and uh, like subscribe if you haven't and uh, be looking out for the next one thank you